and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It's Gem here and today I'm delighted to be back in Seasons by Hannah Carlson. I, uh, I love this book, it's lovely. And I'm even more excited to be back to this page which I am thoroughly enjoying. I'm actually enjoying the itty bittiness about it. Uh, today what I thought we would do, this isn't going to be a tutorial because uh, this is a little bit of exploration for me as well. Uh, today I'm going to concentrate on my turnip stroke swede. I've decided that that's what it is. Now conveniently something that we feed to our cattle in the winter is indeed turnips and there is a gigantic pile of them out in the yard. So I took the liberty of going and taking a photograph and this is something that I talk a lot about when I'm doing my art projects but it's not something I talk about a lot in regards to colouring and that is the use of a reference photo. Now obviously I know what a turnip looks like, I'm Scottish, like we, give, <laughs> we know what a turnip is but I've never actually taken the time to sit down and really study the colours of them. It's generally not something you do when you're standing peeling one which is no easy task by the way if you're not familiar with turnips or swedes. I thought this would be a really good opportunity to you know really focus on that and have a, a really good look. So uh, I've got my reference photo here which will pop up on the screen for you. This is also over on the resources page on the Colour Cave website so if you want to take that photograph and use it yourself please feel free to do so. That's what it's there for and sharing is caring. And I've put an additional couple of photographs up as well because uh, obviously I just went out to snap to wait. And we're going to try and pick out those colours and incorporate them into this image here. So I've got, I've got the image on my phone I just because that's easier for me than you know printing out. So I'm just going to stick that off to the side but know that it's there and I am looking at it. And we're sticking with the Castle Arts pencils as well. I'm really glad I gave these a second chance and uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying using them on this page as well. I will show you the colours that I'm using in my swatch book so that you don't have Castle Art pencils but you're wanting to colour something similar then you'll be able to pick something out that's that's quite close to it or you know it's in the same ballpark. So I'm going to start with the leaves up the top here and just sort of work my way down and the colour of the leaves of these things depends greatly at what point in the growing cycle uh, that they are. Obviously this has been uprooted out of the ground so there may be a little bit of wilting going on. So I'm going to start with the green gold pencil. Now that was the one that I'd used in the pumpkin tutorial up here for the stock. So again I'll just show you very quickly here. Green gold is this colour here, so it's it's like a yellowish, greenish colour. There is, interestingly, if you have some polychromos pencils, there is a green gold that's quite similar to that in the Faber-Castell polychromos, if you're lucky enough to have those. So I'm going to get my pencil out. Now I'm going to avoid these little holes here. I am going to make them holes as if the leaves have started to degrade somewhat. So I can just start off by sticking a light layer of that down. Nice gentle pressure. Don't need to be pressing hard at this stage. And we can pop some of this down here. I've had a very stressful morning this morning um, for reasons I would not like to go into. So I am very glad to be sitting here and doing a little bit of colouring because it always chills me out and it always cheers me up. Now I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think I'm going to make this centre stock part a different colour. So when I come down here I just have to figure out which bits belong where if you see what I'm saying. Yeah, that's looking okay as well. So I might as well just do all of them while I'm here. So I want to be able to blend into this cadmium green pale and the reason I've picked it is because this is a green that's still got quite a lot of yellow in it and I want to give that idea that this has been plucked out the ground. And again we used this pencil before over this other side. I don't want this to end up the same colour as this so we're going to use it in slightly different ratios. And generally, generally when leaves start to degrade, they tend to, if you've, if you've ever killed a house plant, which I am very, very good at, I'm a pro at that, you'll notice that it's the ends of the leaves that usually start to lose their colour first. So when we're using this other green pencil, most of this colour is going to be much, much nearer the actual turnip itself. I would just like to point out as well that in Scotland we use the term turnip to talk about a turnip and a swede, just in case anyone's confused. As far as we are concerned, they're the same thing. Um, just in case anybody's uh, wondering about that, I will just refer to it as a turnip because they kind of taste the same, they kind of look the same. Slightly different genetic backgrounds, but same stuff. So we'll put a little bit of layer of this down in the bottom here. And we'll maybe make these sections here a bit richer. You know, just these little itty, itty bitty bitties. And start to get that down. And maybe we'll have a few patches further up that are surviving. 
So now if we go back to the green gold, we can layer this up and we can blend it in with the patches of the pale cadmium that we've just used. So it's going to be quite subtle, but we don't want the leaves to look like a patchwork quilt. You know, we still want it to look as if the, the, they all belong together and it is part of the same leaf. And that's easier said than done sometimes, especially if you're using quite different colours, quite contrasting colours, which is something that's quite common in autumn leaves. But there'll be more on that later. The next video I'm going to do in this book, I'm going to colour these leaves down here and I'm going to do this as a tutorial style, the same way as I did with the pumpkins. If you want to watch out for that, that'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks as well. There we go. So just want to try and balance this out. So I'm blending the green gold in round the edges of the cadmium green pale and I can build up this colour. So I'm technically I'm kind of layering the pencils over each other, but it's only a slight overlap. But it's just to make sure that we've got the same richness of each colour side by side so that one colour doesn't look really washed out compared to the other one. So I'll just I'll focus on this bottom section first and get that right and then I can start to sidle my way up. And this works well because these two colours are actually really close together in terms of, you know, if you were to look at them on a colour wheel. So it makes that transition look much more subtle because the eye has more difficulty picking up the difference between the two. Whereas if we used the green gold and then we used a green colour that had a lot of blue in it. And I'll just give you an example of that. For example, this one here, the, the Castle Green Deep. That's got a lot more blue than yellow in it when you see it next to that. So we would have a much more difficult time trying to make that look like a, a seamless sort of natural progression from the green gold. So all greens are not equal. <laughs> and that can be said of any to any colour pencil. And again, it's one of those things if you if your colour theory isn't great or maybe if you're just learning, if you take a look at a colour spectrum or a colour wheel, that's really helpful for stuff like that. And it's, it's always good to know whether the colour that you're looking at, so in this case green, is leaning more towards one side of the spectrum and the other. So in this case it's yellow and blue either side. And that can really, really help you picking out colours for your artworks and your colouring pages. So there we go, I just want to blend this all together now. And the next colour I'm going to use is sap green, which is next door to the green gold. And that's just to get a little bit of depth down the bottom here. But we're using this very, very sparingly, very sparingly. So I pop some in here and just right down at the bottom here. And I might even leave a little bit of texture here. Just, you know, let, let those lines be seen a little bit. And I'm going to run this colour down at this centre section as well. Now maybe just the, the way this is curving round like this, maybe that's catching a little bit of light. So we can make that a little bit paler, just sticking with the same pencil. And bring that all the way down. So if we just layer up and then when we get to this curved section, if we just kind of ease up a little bit. So still cover the white of the paper, but just don't keep go, going over with as many layers. Okay, so I'm gonna do this side exactly the same. So I'll maybe skip some of this. So maybe uh, edit it down a little bit for you because I'm not gonna do anything different this side. I'll just pick and choose where I want the pale cadmium green patches. And again, that's it's really up to you, but more so down the bottom here for the reasons that we just talked about and I'll maybe have a nice patch in here. And just as before, build up some layers here. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that first one there. I'm gonna carry on with this one over here. I have to say on the camera, these colors look very vibrant. In real life, they're, they're actually a little bit more muted. I think it's picking up the yellow that we were talking about in the green. So that kind of proves my point, I suppose, if that's the case. <laughs> so I'm gonna just grab my cadmium green pale here. Let's get going with this a little bit. Add this in here. So I'm not sure when this video is actually going to go up. Uh, I might have to do a bit of shuffling uh, just because some of the subscription boxes that I get, they're, they're not arriving when they're supposed to. So I thought I would film this anyway just in case. But it may be the case that by the time you see this, I am going on a, a little holiday. Now when I say a holiday, I'm not going abroad or anything, but uh, my my best friend and I, so that's my best friend that was my bridesmaid at my wedding, her and I are going on a little girls trip for a long weekend. I'm kind of, uh, you know, I talked about that video that I did a few weeks ago on the Tuesday, you know, asking for feedback and things. I did say I've been working an awful lot of hours. I can't say that I feel burnt out. I'm not burnt out, but 
I could definitely, definitely do with a break. There's no, no doubt about that. So we are heading down into the, the south of Scotland, actually quite near where Mr. Jem and I lived for, for a couple of years. We have rented out a holiday cottage. Uh, it's quite an upmarket holiday cottage. We've got nice things like super king beds and hot tubs and underfloor heating and all that kind of stuff. So a little bit of luxury. And my, my friend has had quite a rough year as well, so we just decided that it would do us good to go on a little road trip and, and you know, just let our hair down a wee bit and just be silly. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I'm hoping as well that the change of scenery is going to do me good because I do spend most of my life with when I say within the confines of the farm. Obviously, that's quite a big area. But you know how they say, uh, you know, sometimes... Um, just a change of scenery does you good. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for. And I'm going to take a little sketching set and a little set of maybe watercolour paints with me and hopefully do a wee bit of painting while I'm away as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I'm hoping that I'll come back feeling quite refreshed and recharged. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. My friend's really looking forward to it too, unsurprisingly. So I'm sure we'll have a good time. We, do, we don't do things like that very often, the two of us. Uh, my, my friend's, um, uh, she's a manager, so she very rarely gets to take extended time off. So that's going to be good for, for us. But I say, I'm, I'm looking forward to the change of scenery. And it's nice as well, because I used to live down that way, I do know where I'm going. You know, you don't have the stress of the actual trip and getting lost and things. I know where I'm going. Um, although I've never been specifically to the place where we're staying. Uh, so that's quite good as well. But you know, sometimes you just think, yeah, I, I really need to get away for a wee while. I would really like to go abroad. And Mr. Gem and I really, really need a holiday too. Uh, it's just not, not the right time just now. And also both him and I aren't entirely comfortable with travelling you know, just with the way COVID is. And we're probably being overcautious, but I'd, I just wouldn't want to spend all the money because these things are getting very expensive now and you know just run that risk of maybe infecting someone unknowingly or catching it ourselves i think we will be waiting a little while before we before we take a, a holiday abroad when we do though oh i can't wait for that that's going to be exciting so yeah a, a little november break is going to do me the the world of good we, we did have a, we had a bit of a discussion about when we were going Obviously, this is the time of year where I start prepping for cavemas, so it's actually a really busy time of year for me. But I knew that I just I needed a break after uh, working all these hours, and my my proper job's quite quiet just now, so it's like seize the opportunity, let's go while we can. Uh, but my my friend had booked time off from work, and one of the things that she's getting done is uh, she's getting a tattoo as a tribute to her dog who passed away. And it's taken her a long time to get to the point where she's ready to do it. So she she booked her appointment for her tattoo. And then she realised that there is a hot tub where we're going. And obviously she can't go in the hot tub with a fresh tattoo. So that was one of the main reasons she wanted to pick the place that we picked. So she was a bit crestfallen because we'd obviously sorted out the dates and everything. So we, we were actually going later. We're going a week later than we originally planned. And it's so that she can get healed up a bit. Uh, <laughs> With her, with her tattoo. So she she's actually moved her tattoo earlier and we've moved it later. So it's actually going to be like two weeks between them, um, just to be sure. But that was, she was crestfallen and it made me laugh a little bit. And then I felt bad because I realised that, that, you know, she was super looking forward to it. Now, the thing about it as well is that's quite ridiculous is... It's going to be November, like we're single figures Celsius by that point. It's not warm outside and she wants to go and sit in a hot tub. I have sat in a hot tub uh, on the 23rd of December and it was delightful. The uh, The movement from the hot tub back inside was not so pleasant right enough and it involved a little bit of sort of jogging <laughs> to get back into the house. So yeah, I, I mean, I've been sitting in a hot tub when it's snowing. The problem is that the, obviously the water is warm enough. There's no problem with that. But what I have found is when you get to quite extreme low temperatures, the hot tub struggles to regulate the temperature and the water doesn't stay, you know, at a nice toasty temperature for very long. And you have to get literally get out and cover it over and then let it do its thing. So there's that. But it really, I mean, you only need enough time to sit and have a 
Uh, I was going to say, I was going to use the Scottish word, like have a blether, that means to have a chat, you know, the sort of light chit chat. But you only need so much time to have a blether and drink a glass of wine, so, you know, it's no, no problems at all. I don't, I, when I say it out loud like that, it does sound absolutely ludicrous that my, my best friend's obsessed with getting in a hot tub at the beginning of November. Because let's face it, Scotland's not the warmest place at this time of year. Uh, we are still quite mild temperature-wise, though. You know, there's... Uh, there's actually um, been a few days where we've been mid-teens and we should not be at this time of year. For these lower leaves, I am going to use more of the cadmium green than the green gold. Again, it's just sort of sticking with that theory that the, you know, the leaves at the, at the peripheries are usually the first to go. But we'll still, we'll still use the same method, but I'm just going to make the, the cadmium green patches a little bit more frequent and maybe a bit larger. Especially down here in at this base part and pop that in there. I need to have a wee sharpen because these leaves are a little bit smaller we've still got the the holes and uh, my pencil's just not quite sharp enough for that. I've done quite a bit of sharpening with these pencils now and uh, I'm pleased to report that I haven't had a lot of problems with breakages. I know a few of you had mentioned in the comments of the of the first video that we did in this book that there was maybe an odd pencil here and there and the course seemed to be uh, not in very good shape all the way through which is a shame, and I have had one pencil like that. I can't remember which one it was, and I'll need to look through and find it. Oh yeah, it was the charcoal grey. I'll show you very quickly if I just zoom out a wee bit. Uh, the charcoal grey is the pencil that I used to do the 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 sort of soft outline around these. So although it's all on the page, all over the page, it's actually very little in terms of area coverage, if that makes sense. And uh, there, there is a full size pencil that I haven't used and there is the charcoal grey. So that's taken uh, a fair, there was a few times where I sharpened it and the, the core was just crumbling, you know. I had a point and then the minute I touched it, it just kind of went Pleh. But that's really the only pencil that I've had problems with. And see, they seem to be sharpening up really well. And that's just with the Tagal sharpener. And I use it on a number two setting because this is quite a, quite a soft core. So you want the point to be shorter and stubbier to help you know keep the strength as much as possible. Because obviously the longer and skinnier it is, the more likely it is to break. So I am, I am pleasantly surprised. We're getting great results in this book. They really are. Because I, I, I was, <laughs> when we did the, the, the original review video way back, I, I kind of um, worked away on that piece and that was in World of Flowers by Johanna Basford and I've got a page there that's all sort of little squares it almost looks like a comic book strip and I, I tend to use that for road testing pencils because you can do it in a small area and still have a finished result fairly quickly because of the size of the images and as I was doing that my heart kind of sank a wee bit and I, you know, I, was, I was disappointed and I really wanted to like the pencils so I'm super super glad that I've gone back to them okay so I'm back to the sap green which is a slightly darker green again just to do this vein in the middle and I'm going to make this one a little bit darker and maybe have that highlight idea again around this area because again if we think about the light sources that we've used here we're kind of coming somewhere from here so you know there might be a little bit there just to keep a bit of consistency and continuity between all our separate little images here again not important really you know it's not no, not a vital part of the picture but it's just one of those little touches that you can add in to kind of level up your colouring a little bit and I think these ones in here, there's this little part in here, oh, and around the base of these little short parts as well, I'm going to make that the, the sap green. Sap green? Yes, sap green. I I, for some reason my brain can't compute the difference between these two green pencils today. I don't know why. <laughs> to be fair, I think after the last few weeks my brain is on a bit of a go slow. And you know what? I don't blame it at all. My, my brain's telling me it's tired. Just get all those itty bitty bitties. Itty bitty bitties. Again, not taking much care here. These areas are so tiny. Uh, you know, I'm not really worried about perfect blends and that kind of thing. For these two leaves as well, again, I'm imagining that they're kind of in the shadow of what's going on in this side. So I'm going to use much more of the sap green on these two, uh, on the actual leaf parts, as well as in that vein. So I'll grab my cadmium first, make this more green than yellow. I've inadvertently made a kind of chartreuse colour with these ones up here. That wasn't intentional, it's just kind of happened. And uh, then I'm going to grab this sap green again and not the cadmium green. And you can see I've used a lot more layer, as I said I would do. So it's quite subtle. You know, there isn't a raging difference between the leaves these two up here and these smaller ones on this left hand side. You know, there aren't huge jumps in the colour change but it's enough 
for you to know that they're different. Now we need to think about the interesting parts. I kept sort of studying these uh, these turnip images of mine and I singled one out in particular. Yeah, I like this one. This one in here. <laughs> Autofocus is like, oh, what are you doing to me? Yeah, this one in here. So I'm gonna go with that. That's what I'm gonna use for my color base because it seems to cover quite a lot of the colors and it's got this nice tail the same as ours has here. So I think I'm going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to start with these sort of yellowish brown colours. So let's see what we've got in here. I think the palest colour is probably going to be really close to the Naples yellow light. And I think that might be a good base, but I'm not going to take that colour all over. Normally I would use one pencil to do the base of an entire shape, but because of the colours in this, I'm not going to do that. Ah, see, you think you know what I'm doing? Just throw your curveball. <laughs> So let's grab the Naples yellow light and I don't foresee it making a huge impact on the paper just because of the colour of the paper but because we've got this grey outline it might stand out a little better. Let's see shall we. Now I'm probably only going to bring it up maybe a third of the way up the actual main part of the the turnip. Yeah, it's, it's not doing a huge amount but what it is going to do is it's going to impact the colours that we then lay down on top because it's going to make them lighter. So I'm not having a straight edge here as well. I'm leaving quite a ragged edge. I know you won't be able to see that just because of the, the shade of the pencil, but I've put a fairly good layer of that down. And then I want to go to a more sort of yellowish color. So I'm thinking that the cadmium yellow, which is actually quite a muted yellow in this set, this one up here, uh, you can see compared to the one next door, that's what I would deem an offensive shade of yellow. It's offensive to your eyeballs. Uh, yeah, so we'll try the, the cadmium yellow next and we'll mix these two together. And again, I'm actually only going to bring this a little bit further up. And I'm deliberately making this really irregular. Uh, I don't want there to be anything smooth about my turnip. So I'll bring some of that down there as well. wonder if I can get zoomed in a bit closer just because of the, the shades that we're using here. There we go, we'll try that. And then a sort of brownier shade which I'm going to use a uh, yellow ochre for. And I'm going to use this specifically to put all the little pits and, you know, all the all the sort of little imperfections in. So a bit like we did in our, our pumpkins and our, our, our fruit berry thing, as May called it. <laughs> which I think is a great description. I follow some of Hannah's lines just on this bottom part that I've already been colouring in. Um, and really get some... I'm going to stray from the lines as well though, but really get some... Um, some interest going here. Now when we're doing this, especially on this little tail here, we can blend out with the, the lightest colour again and that's going to have an impact on that. But I also want to keep this side a bit darker again, just keeping with our light source theme. So I'm going to use a lot more of the yellow ochre on this left hand side just to fit in with that theme. So I can nip back to my Naples yellow light now. And that, this is a, a colouring technique that quite a lot of colourists employ and it's not one that I generally use um, but that is to blend and burnish with a very light coloured pencil and quite often it's a white pencil and it just helps to brighten the colours up a bit and um, still have that ability to blend. I so say it's not, not a technique that I favour normally but because we're working with such a pale item here uh, this, this just might be the ticket for us. So this just helps to smooth out the colour a little bit. Now for the top section, this is where things are going to get interesting. I'm going to go back to our Old Faithful Green Gold and in this middle third, I'm going to use that as my base colour. I've only just decided that right now, but we are actually working in thirds. And again, I want to keep that line quite irregular, just as we did in the bottom part. And we want to start introducing a, a bright purple colour on this slightly rotten one, there's this magenta colour and it's absolutely beautiful. So I want to incorporate a little bit of that into this middle third and then leave the deeper purple for up the very top. And we are spoiled for choice in these pencils. I haven't got the autofocus on here, but I'm hoping you can see this okay. Uh, and I'm going to go for uh, the cobalt purple. I'm, I'm really going to go for it. Uh, just to show you as well the yellow ochre, I didn't show you that earlier. That's the pencil there that I was using. Um, as I say, when, when I'm zoomed in this close, I actually need to turn the autofocus off because it, it's it can't focus basically it really struggles with it so it's kind of difficult when you're trying to show swatches and stuff like that i'm quite excited about this color <laughs> now this seems to be when we get into this middle section these linear parts are much more obvious so i'm going to go back to making my marks left to right primarily but i still want it to be really uneven and then just soften those edges just going back to a scumbling motion you know that little circular motion that we like to use and I'm going to lean quite heavily into these lined areas now as well. 
And when I'm running my pencil along that line and pressing quite hard, give us some really nice rich colour because why not? Who said turnips had to be boring? The irony of this is that um, I'm actually not a big fan of turnip. I don't mind it in soups and things. Uh, or with haggis, that's probably the only exception. Uh, but as a general rule, it's not something I, I'm, I'm all that excited about. <laughs> I think sometimes I've got this thing, I, I don't really like sweet things and savoury dishes a lot of the time, and I think it's just my palate. And if you have a, 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 you know, quite a ripe turnip, it does have a sweetness to it, a bit like a parsnip. And my, for some reason, my taste buds aren't that excited about things like that. There are exceptions to that rule, obviously, but just generally I tend to steer away from things like that because I don't actually like sweet things. I'm not a sweet tooth person at all. Uh, right, okay, anyway, I'm rambling on about my, my eating preferences. I'm going back to my green gold now and I'm going to work my way around these purple parts and blend them out a little bit with my green gold so I'm, I'm pressing a little bit harder now I would say I'm definitely medium pressure maybe even a little bit harder than that and it's just to blend out those edges and smooth out the appearance of some of those areas there maybe bring that down there and then just a quick layer over the top and then when we get to the top this is where it gets exciting and when I look at my turnips all of them have much much darker areas right at the top so Let's just get a wee layer of this down first. So this is just the pencil we were using down here. And we want to pick out some really mean dark colours. Really dark purple. I'm going to grab the aubergine. I'm going to start to go into mulberry, which is this colour here. Right, aubergine. So I'm going to leave a slight paler part here. And again, that's just thinking about the light source. My gardener is here today. I can hear him out with the leaf blower and one thing and I'm just praying that it doesn't pick up on the mic. I have to keep looking at my watch as well because we, we have this unspoken rule. I just take a cup of, co cup of coffee out to him at 11 o'clock. There's no question about it or, uh, you know, it's just I just do it and he just has, he stops and has a wee break. And he has got his work cut out for him just now because there are leaves everywhere. Okay, so with the mulberry now, primarily this is going to be the darkest area. So I'm going to pop a very light layer of that down over the whole area, just in that top right hand corner, uh, left hand corner, excuse me. Goodness me, can't tell my left from my right now either. So this is bad chat at this time of day. If I'm like this this morning, what am I going to be like by later on this afternoon? Um, and on this uh, right hand side, no, the right, right hand side, <laughs> I am going to do what I did down the bottom and I'm just going to put in some of this, especially and lean heavily along those. And then I can start to build this up. So I'll put another layer of mulberry down on this side and then go back with a slightly lighter colour, the aubergine. And that's just to warm it up a little bit. Um, I, I think... Oh no! See me talking about breakages? There we go. That serves me right, doesn't it? Alright, let's see how we go. Let's see how long this, this takes to sharpen. See, that's me having to eat my words now. Typical. Okay, I had to take a short intermission there. I've managed to rescue a wee stubby point on this using the number one setting on the Tagal sharpener. Uh, <laughs> so basically just completely contradicted myself but anyway we've managed to rescue it that's fine I have lost a, a little bit of pencil though um, this is exactly what you guys were talking about in the comments but these things happen so anyway yes aubergine so we're using this in conjunction with the mulberry on this side and it's just to warm it up and just keep everything cohesive and we can bring a little bit of it down here as well and maybe add in a little bit of texture too. So that's looking quite rich and yummy in that corner. Yummy. <laughs> okay, so when we're coming across here, I'm just going over this whole area. I'm going to pop a little bit of the aubergine over this side. And you can see I'm just popping that gently over the top there. If you can hear the crunching that's going on in the background, Jock's got an isle of bone, so I'm sorry about that. But he's uh, he's been quite unsettled today. Um, his skin's bothering him a little bit. He's got skin allergies and uh, he's he's been quite itchy. So anything that kind of distracts him from that until his medication kicks in is all good. Generally, his skin's pretty good though. He's been fairly, fairly reasonable over this last wee while, but we do find the change of season seems to exacerbate it slightly. We've kind of got the bulk of the colour down here, but I just feel as if this part isn't really merging with this part. And if we look at our reference photo, you can see some green poking through in areas. So I'm going to stick a little bit of the green gold in in the paler areas here and that just helps to bring everything together. I'm trying to avoid the mulberry though because it's just going to make it look really muddy. I feel like I've, I can afford to bring this mulberry colour round a bit though. Um, I think I've maybe been a wee bit over cautious there. So I'm going to bring some down here. Again just very gently though and let it, let it sort of 
melt into the colours that are there. But especially up around this top part, as discussed from our reference photo, I can afford to put a little bit more down there. I still feel as if we can afford to put more purple in this. Um, I think we can maybe bring it, you know, almost down to halfway. So I'm going to use the, the deep purple uh, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to work a bit more of that in in this middle section here. Be a bit braver. That's better. That I'm happy, happier now. Happy Jeff Jim. Good stuff. <laughs> right. So there we go. That is that's finished off our turnip. That's brought a nice pop of colour to this side of the page as well. And I'm really enjoying these sort of deep, rich autumnal colours and being able to mix in a little bit of everything else as well. So uh, I hope this has been interesting for you today. I fully encourage you to use reference photos, even if you know what something looks like. And it's just the same as withdrawing. You you know what something look like looks like and you know what colours they are really. But it's sometimes a really good exercise to take a photograph or find a reference photo of that object because you will find out that there's actually more to it than, than your brains put together and that's something that's quite important as well as we develop on our colouring journeys. Please feel free to use the reference images that I've taken. As I said at the beginning, they're over on the CAVE website under the resources tab and all the pictures that I've taken, I think there's three or four, I will make sure that they're all there for you if you want to use those. And that's it for today, guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, if you could stick a like on the video, that would be really helpful. That really helps me out. And I will see you back in the cave really soon for another video. So have a great day, everyone. Please stay safe and take care of each other. Bye-bye for now.